instance, we've installed the JSON plugin into our WordPress site, we have access to a feed of information, and we can pull that data into our Facebook application. We've already done something similar when we pulled in our YouTube feed, so let's take a look. So I'm going to go into BB Edit and make sure my code snippets file is already open. And I'm also going to go into Transmit and open up our Facebook folder. I need to open the JavaScript file, so I'll open up this underscore folder, the JS folder, and click on the myscript.js. And I'll also need to open the index.php file. I'll select both of those and open them. The first thing I need to do is add a div to hold my content. It needs to go after this welcome div. So I'm just going to open this up right here. And I'm going to go into code snippets and grab this placeholder for our blog content. So all the blog content is going to be inserted into this div. Go back into index.php and just paste it right there. And we'll just indent it with everything else. Now that the JSON is there, we need to pull our JSON feed from the WordPress site. So I've written a little bit of JavaScript code to handle that. Let's take a look, go back into code snippets. And here's the code that we need to insert into our JavaScript file. It's very similar to the script that retrieves the YouTube feed. And we worked on that on the movie on adding a JSON video feed with YouTube APIs. So if we take a look at this, it's doing pretty much the same thing, setting up a couple of variables and then setting up an output that starts with a heading. Then it's gonna go through each of the posts that the JSON feed returns. And it's gonna store that information into the output variable. So it's just reading the data from the JSON plugin that we installed in WordPress and then it's outputting in a variable that we can then insert by calling this get element by ID and looking for the blog div that we placed into our HTML and then setting that HTML to the output variable that we are going through and setting to the posts each time. So I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna go into myscript.js and that needs to be at the same level as our populate videos function, which is right here. So I'm gonna place that right on top of that. So I'll paste that right there. So now that we've created this function, we also need to call the function. So this code is not going to execute unless it gets called from somewhere. We want it to be called after the initialization for the Facebook API is complete. So that would go right here. So let's go back into code snippets and just grab this code. We're going to put that into this line right here. And that's going to call our function. And then that out a little bit. And I need to make sure that I save both of these files. By placing it here, we are sure that after the Facebook API has been loaded, it's going to execute that function. We then need to do that with the populate videos because that was automatically called by YouTube's API. And that was done. So if we go back into our index page, you could see that this code that we inserted from YouTube has a callback right here that targets our function called populate videos as soon as the information has been loaded from the YouTube API. So we didn't need to put this function into our JavaScript file because it's already been called by that YouTube API. So we'll insert that there. And now we're ready for this information to come in. So let's go ahead and make sure that they're saved. And I'm going to switch back into Facebook and I'll refresh this page. So now our feed of information is coming in. It doesn't look very good, but we'll fix that with some CSS later on. I then want to show you one thing that is not working here. We click on this link right here it's going to open up a new window and take you to that article on view source now if we click on this link right here it's going to actually open that link up in the facebook iframe and that's not good so i'm going to click on this back button if it asks you if you want to send the form again just hit send it's not going to really make a difference so the problem is happening if we click on these links. These links are coming directly from the feed that comes from our WordPress site. So they're already in there. We can't modify those links. We've already got a link to the content up here. So I could just get rid of these continue reading links and then our feed will look just fine. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go back into code snippets with a little bit of jQuery. So back into code snippets and I'm going to grab the next piece of code. This piece of code is going to remove the links from the feed that comes in from our WordPress plugin. So I'm going to copy this and go back into myscript.js. And I need to scroll down while it's going through each of these articles. I want to make sure that I insert that function right there. So as that information is being read from the WordPress plugin, we're going to create a temporary variable and feed the excerpt into that temporary variable and then use this little bit of jQuery 
to remove all the anchor tags from that temporary variable. Then we'll feed that back into a variable called excerpt. So that excerpt variable will have the data from the YouTube feed that is the excerpt without any of the anchor tags. So we'll need to modify our code a little bit more, change this right here, so that it doesn't output the excerpt, but it outputs this new version of the excerpt, which gets rid of the anchor tags. Back into code snippets really quick. We'll grab this next line of code. This just makes sure that we have the new version of the excerpt. So we'll replace this right here and save that. And now we'll go back into our Facebook application, hit refresh. These links, the anchor tags that used to be there are now gone, which is great. So all we have to do now is make this look great. Go back into code snippets and I've prepared some CSS that's gonna style the blog posts. So let me grab this code right here and I'll paste it into our CSS file. Looks like we didn't open that. So I'm gonna go back into transmit, look for the CSS, open this up. So I'll put this at the very end of the file. I'll save it and then I'll go back into Facebook and refresh. And let's take a look. It looks a lot nicer. Let's go ahead and pull this over to the side so I can go over the CSS and show you what I've done here. It's really simple CSS. Let me make this window a little bit smaller so you could see them both side by side. So it's so you just setting up a little bit of a margin, changing the font to this Excel font that we've imported from Google Fonts, and then just making some basic changes to the way that everything looks on our Facebook page. There's nothing too complicated on this page. The only thing that you may see that's a little bit different is we're changing the cursor here so that when you go over these links, it gives you that little pointer cursor that's a hand. So our feed is looking great. Content on your app can be data you get from other sources like websites, YouTube feeds, or any other kind of feed. JSON with a little bit of jQuery gives you the ability to easily parse and feed data into our application.